What's up, everybody? Afro Joe here, Tenek TIE as well. If you've been following the George Zimmer trial like I have, I know you probably say the same thing. I say, like, what the fuck is. Well, what the hell is the prosecution doing? Now, I'm going to say this. Now, I question, I say that because I know it's running through everybody's mind. What, what the hell is wrong with the prosecution? They're not doing their job. They're dragging their feet. Something ain't right here. Now, I've sat here and I've watched that trial since day one on HLN and following what they're saying. And I noticed that they had all these witnesses coming up on that stand. All these witnesses testifying. Not all of them, not the medical examiners, not the doctors, none of that. But all these people from that gated community that George Zimmerman lives in and Trayvon got killed in. Now, all these people set up there. Uh, Lying on the stand. Lying. Telling the courtroom, telling the jury, telling the judge. Oh, I seen everything. I see this and I seen that. But before the case, before the even trial started, they said, I ain't seen nothing. I ain't seen nothing. All I heard was screaming. But when the trial started, these people got up on that stand and lied they tell off. Talking about, oh, I seen everything. I seen this, I seen that, I seen the world change in the blink of an eye, sir. And all these people saying Zimmerman was just defending himself. And these people weren't even there to watch, see what happened. Child is dead and these people sitting up there taking up for George Zimmerman. He makes you question what what the hell is wrong with these people. Only four people, four people. Cater Tray, Trayvon's defense. Four people, and that was his friend Rachel and his family. How come only four people came to his to Trayvon's defense? But everybody else that came up on that stand set up there and said, Zim is a good guy, self defense, and they weren't even there to see what happened. Talking about, oh, he never do nothing, he was just self defense. I did a video talking about this man, Mark Olson, also of the law, a marshal, sitting up there saying, oh, I picked a gun out for Zimmerman to use. He ended up killing Trayvon with that gun. And, and the prosecutor grilling the he hell out of him talking about, oh, you said that in your book. You put that in your book. And I was glad he did that. Oh, you, you don't remember that? You put that in your book. You put that in your book. Made me question, made, made me question, why did Zimmerman only call three people after he killed Trayvon Martin? Probably saying I'm saying the same. Three people, yeah, Mark Osman, Joe Oliver, and Frank Taffy. Only three people he called telling him I killed some child. And you got this man going on national TV saying, I'm proud that he killed this child. What parent would sit up on national TV and say, I'm proud he killed a child? There's no way in hell a parent would sit there and say, I'm glad he killed the child. What parent do you know that would say that? Probably a mental one. Probably a one that's lost their damn mind. But what parent would say something like that? And ain't nobody questioning that man's test testimony. And then you got Frank Taffy. Now this man and Joe Oliver has been in the media since day one. Talking about them in He's an okay guy. Been knowing him for some odd years. He cool. These two men, Joe Oliver quit his job. Quit his job just to support them. Why, why would you quit your job to support somebody that just killed a child? And he's got kids. Joe Oliver's got kids and he's sitting up there saying, I quit my job just to support my friend. But parent. Well, stop supporting his own family 
just to support somebody that just killed a child. What parent would do that? These are the questions that should have been asked in the courtroom by the prosecutor. Why would you quit your job just to support somebody that just killed a child? And ain't nobody ever thought about that. Why did Joe Oliver quit his job just to support somebody that just killed a child? Make you question. And this man sitting up on there knew more about the gun than the people said in the courtroom. How do you know more about that gun than the people that put it in the that brought it into the courtroom? It's got two safeties on it. Oh, that's what they said in court. That's what they said in court. Got two safeties. I ain't know that. I like. I ain't no gun person, but I ain't never heard in my life there's two safeties on the gun. I heard there was one. I ain't know there was two on this one to trigger, and they show in the courtroom that you can pull the trigger and there ain't no safety on that trigger. There ain't no safety on that trigger. But there's a safety to keep you from firing. But there ain't no safety on that trigger. Only four people testifying for Trayvon Martin. That's bad. That's, ain't that a damn shame? His mother, his father, and his brother, and his friend. Backing up Trayvon. Trayvon. Rachel sitting up there saying she was the last person to ever talk to Trayvon. His mother, brother, and father sat there, said, that's, that's Trayvon. They're screaming. And all these witnesses, there was five witnesses right after Trayvon's father testified. They was five, five, five witnesses, five or four witnesses saying, oh, that was them and yelling. And one of them was a soldier, and he knew what he knew what screaming sound like. He said that sound like Zimmerman. Still make me question. If he's got a gun on him, why does he need to scream? He's got the upper hand. That's one thing that the, that prosecutor should have asked on people. If he was screaming, why did he have that gun? He had a gun on him and he had the upper hand. So there is no reason for him to sit up there and scream for help no reason look at the body you see that yellow tarp in the background look how far that body is from the sidewalk look how far the body is from the sidewalk now you see that the sidewalk is level but Frank Taffy said oh it's at a slant you, you see that I don't see that slant I, I know ain't no construction worker but I don't see there ain't no slant he said he was like, that's a slant. Trayvon body is feet, feet away from that sidewalk and they trying to say, oh, that sidewalk is a weapon. I did not know that Trayvon can pick up a piece, that big piece of concrete and use it as a weapon. How they, how, how can you do that unless if you Superman or the Hulk that can pick up that? Look at him. Feet away from the body, from the sidewalk. Body's turned over. Zimmer said he pulls Trayvon's arms out to see what he got on him. Where his hands at? He ain't pull his boy's hands out of nowhere. The bullet wound. They say they found gun residue on his, on Trayvon. You see that? You see where it went through the heart? Which don't match up, man. And I sat there and I look. I'm looking at. I'm looking at this, trying to figure out what, what am I missing? Like what am I missing? What am I missing about this? Cause one thing, he he said, "Oh, Trayvon had his knees up in my armpit and between my between my armpits and my ribs." banging my head against the sidewalk banging your head against the sidewalk if he was banging your head hard against that sidewalk that wound there wouldn't be two little cuts on the back of your head that needs band-aids it would have been 
your head would have been split open where you needed to have stitches. And they and the doctor set up on the stand said all he needed is two band aids. Why would a doctor that went to medical school say all he needed was two band aids? All he needed was two band aids. There was nothing serious about that. He needed two band aids. If he was getting his head banged against the cement of the sidewalk, there would have been a, his head would have been busted wide open. He wouldn't have been able to shoot a gun because he would have been out of it. He would have been out of it because he would have had a concussion or he couldn't move because his, he, or he would have been knocked out for good because his head was banged against the concrete depending on how hard Trayvon was slamming his head against the sidewalk two little wounds on the back of Zimmer's head and you see how the blood is going you don't see the blood they said they didn't even find Zimmer's blood on his shirt but they found Trayvon's how did Trayvon's blood end up on your shirt but they couldn't find your blood on your shirt they couldn't find his blood on his own shirt, but they found Trayvon's blood all over his shirt. Tell me something. I don't know. I know if I was a prosecutor, I would have digged up Sir Isaac Newton just to, ask, just to ask, how does physics work? How does gravity work? I know what goes up must come down. What goes left must go right. I know that. But how does gravity work where his head get banged against the sidewalk and the blood ain't even on his shirt? That blood wouldn't have ran down the back of his head. All the way down to his shirt. His shirt would have been, the back of his shirt would have been, had blood on it. His blood on it. But you know, they didn't find no trace of his blood on his shirt. Oh, uh, it was raining outside. He was wearing a jacket. He was wearing a jacket. Then they said his nose wasn't really broken. And I know I seen the I seen the picture I seen the video where he was handcuffed and taken into the police department. No blood nowhere. I ain't seen no blood on his nose, no blood from his head. I seen the tape. I seen it several times. I didn't see no blood on his face or his head. And I don't know what it is about people tiptoeing around that whole thing. All oh, the dispatcher told him, don't follow him. That is stalking him. That was He was stalking Trayvon. And people tiptoeing around it. Oh, he was just protecting his neighborhood watch. His neighborhood. They call it neighborhood watch for a reason. Because you go around the neighborhood with somebody with you just to watch the neighborhood. It didn't say go around the neighborhood and kill people. It said go around and watch the neighborhood, not kill people in the neighborhood. Like I said, out of everybody in that whole gated community, only four, to, well, you probably saw four people testified for Trayvon. His mama, his brother, his father, and his friend. Ain't nobody else in that gated community testified for Trayvon but his family and friends. That was it. Everybody, oh, Jimmy, y'all good. He's a good person. And then they trying to bring up hit, bring up Trayvon's, bring up that, oh, he been kicked out of school for three times. Dan like. Zimmerman didn't do nothing, didn't break the law more than once. Got a rap sheet longer than my arm. I don't get it. How come dad like Zimmerman didn't break the damn law beating up on some woman? Resisting arrest and so on and so forth. Oh, but they wanted to sit there. Oh, Trayvon smoked weed and got kicked out of school. What the hell does that got to do with the case? Trayvon get kicked out of school and smoking weed. And this man has got a reputation of violence in his past. And y'all act like y'all, and he ain't did nothing. If I was the prosecutor, I would have been grilling every witness that the that the defendant would. Def, yeah, the defendant would. 
defended Lloyd Wood because I wouldn't be playing it. I would have been. I would. I definitely would have had Frank Taffy on on the stand. Question: Hey, how come you was in the media more than a more than the case was? How come you knew more about this case than the police or the media telling people? How come you supporting a man to kill a child and you got kids yourself? How come you support a man and his wife that lied about having money? Y'all forget about that? Jimmy's wife and Jimmy lying about having money? I definitely would have been grilling Joe Oliver. How come you quit your job and stop supporting your family just to support a man to kill the child? How come you and Frank Taffy stayed in the media more than the case and the story has. What, like I said before, what is Frank Taffy and Joe Oliver hiding? That's one thing I would love to know. What are they hiding? Because they hiding something. They know something. They know something more than what they telling the people. Oh, Mark Osman. Oh, he already set himself up when he wrote that book. That ain't a friend that's going to say, yeah, and write a book and make money off of you. Oh, yeah, I picked a gun out for him to kill Trayvon Martin. And plus, I wrote the book about how he killed Trayvon Martin. That ain't a friend. That's somebody selling you out for money. He goes on Dr. Phil talking about, yes, I picked the gun out to kill Trayvon Martin. I'm proud that he killed Trayvon Martin. He deserved to die. For what, being 17 walking home from the store? Look at here. Martin family sitting there with Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx went to the BET Awards wearing the Trayvon, wearing a shirt with Trayvon face on. Look at all these people. You can't say it ain't a race thing because look at all these people. Black, white. Want justice for Trayvon Martin. Want justice for Trayvon Martin. And all these people can do in the gay community. Oh, Jimmy, he's a kind guy. He's nice. And they sit up there talking about, oh, we found weed in Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin's system. And that's what caused him to lash out on Zimmer. I ain't never heard in my life that a uh, weed will make you lash out on somebody. Studies don't even say, oh, we will make you kill some. We will make you hurt somebody. I ain't never heard it from a doctor or a scientist saying, we will make you hurt somebody. Me, we will make you lash out against somebody. But the defense is trying to say, oh, we does that to people. Yeah, I heard bath salt and crack, cocaine, heroin, angel dust, acid. Stuff like that, yeah, I've heard that can make you lash out against people because it affects the brain even more by the by by the, the emotions. It makes the emotions go wild. But see, when we it eases the brain, it eases the brain. Same like alcohol, it will make you lash out. Alcohol, liquor, crack, cocaine, her heroin. Angel does all that will sit there and make you lash out against people because it affects your emotions more than ever. We does not affect your emotions like that. We would actually, like for real, man. If we was, if we will make you lash out against people, how come I ain't hear no stories from the? How come news ain't say, oh, we found five pe we found one guy killing five people because he smoked a blunt. How come I ain't pick up no newspaper? Fifteen kids got killed at Sandy Hook because that kid was smoking weed. How come I ain't hear stuff like that? Because it's not true. You always hear something about crack, cocaine, heroin, angel dust, bath salt, alcohol, liquor. That's all you hear about somebody getting hurt, killed by people that's under the influence of those narcotics. Yes, they. if you look at a doctor, if you go to rehab and the doctors there they say alcohol and liquor is a narcotic you, that's all you hear that weed we does not like we does not make you kill somebody we was like we will make you lazy 
we will give you the munchies, make you sleep it, and that's it. It does not make you lash out against nobody. And the funny thing about it is, I did a video about it before, about this, about how they did a drug and alcohol test on Trayvon Martin, but they ain't do one on Zimmerman. But they bring it up and call it, oh, we found drugs, we found weed in Trayvon's blood system. Where do you think I got that information from? I, I, I was sitting there watching a video from about Dick Gregory. He was at uh, Washington, Washington rally for Trayvon. This is back in March of 2012. He brings up how come they didn't show the tape where Trayvon Martin was at the store to see who was following him or see who was with him. Don't you know they waited a month later. A month later after this, that video was posted with with Dick Gregory being in Washington. A month later, they showed the video when Trayvon was at the store. And when I did that video, how come Mark Osman wasn't on, on the stand testifying? And he testified the next day. How come Frank Taffy and Joe Oliver ain't sitting up on the witness stand getting grilled by the prosecutor? If I was the prosecutor, I would have grilled every witness that the defense would have put up. I would have grilled them to they snap. I would have asked questions that should have been asked from the get-go. How come y'all taking up for a man that killed a child and you wasn't even there? Now that's the question. How come you taking up for a man that killed somebody and you weren't even at the crime scene to see what happened? You sit up here and you say you saw everything, but before the case, before the trial started, you said you ain't seen nothing. How you go from I didn't see nothing to I seen everything? That's the one thing I still don't get understand. How you go from Oh, I didn't see nothing. To, oh, I saw everything. And why would the, why would Zimmerman want, why would Zimmerman start yelling for help if he had the gun on him? They didn't find no DNA, no fingerprints of Trayvon on Zimmerman's face or gun, on the gun host. They didn't find nothing. But they found Trayvon's blood on Zimmerman's shirt. Tell me something I'm missing right there. They didn't find nothing of Zimmerman on Trayvon. They didn't find nothing of Zimmerman on Trayvon. But they found Trayvon's blood on Zimmerman. You tell me something that I'm missing. You tell me something I'm missing. It's the same... I, I was watching the show they had on a what TV one or or expired. It, it's like a, it's those those stage networks or like BET except more blacker. And they was talking about a story about a a father. Him and his wife is living uh just I think it was either North Carolina or Georgia. And there was this white guy that just got done building this house. Now this black family just moved in. His the father he went to work. His sons was at the house unpacking. One of the sons called the dad and said, Dad, some white dude is at the house. Some white dude's at the house drunk. So the father gets on the phone and calls the police because the son tells the father that the guy has a box cutter. Now, he's in a state where it has stand your ground laws. Now, this black father calls the police, and it's recorded. says, there's somebody at the house with a box cutter trying to stab my son. I think it's the contractor. He gets to the house, and it is the contractor. It's the contractor. The father gets down and tells the contractor to leave move, go somewhere else and leave my family alone. The father's, like I said, it's a black family. Now the father's trying to defend his sons because his sons ain't got no weapons. His sons is like, 
19, 18, and 17, 18, yeah, something like that, 18, 17. As the, as the, 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 the construction worker attacks the father, the father shot, shoots and kills him. But the father goes to jail for standing his ground. And my miss is something here where if a black person, like I said, this is not, a, like, I know it's not a racial thing with the whole Zimmer trap, but if if a black person defends himself, he goes to jail, the black person will go to prison for life just defending himself. But when it's some other minority that kills a black person and says, oh, I'm standing my ground. They look at it and say, oh, that black person did all these bad things. They deserve to die anyway. But people wasn't there to see it. What makes what makes it right to, for Zimmerman to kill a child? You can say, oh, he's an adult. By the eyes of the law, he is still a child. When you hit 18, they look at you as an adult. When you hit 21, you are an adult. See what I'm saying? Well, you can say you can go break out. Well, what about some of the crimes that the kids commit? Depending on what the depending on what's the crime. If a child kills a kid, if a child, if a nine-year-old child kills somebody, they be charged for murder. Yes. If a child steals something, that's nothing. That's petty. They just like okay, slap on the wrist. You go see a therapist. That's all it is, depending on the law. But like I said, what makes it right for a man in his 30s, a man in his 30s to go around the neighborhood with a gun looking for trouble, a rap sheet longer than your arm, But gives him the right to kill somebody. Take the law into his own. He he calls the police several times about silly little things. Oh, somebody left their garage door open. Click that's it to the police. Oh, the kids playing out in the street. Click that's it. And then half the times the calls were oh black people, black people. Click. I ain't like I said I ain't trying to make it, but what give this man any rights to shoot somebody that ain't got no weapon on him. All he had was a bag of Skittles and a and a canned drink. But Trayvon's been shot down like a dog because this man want to play Superman. This man wants to play Superman, but these people act like Zimmerman is a god. Oh, he killed a 17 y'all. That's that. Man kills a man kills a child. Man kills a child, and he and y'all act like he's Superman. I don't get it. I don't get it. Tell me something that I'm missing. Tell me something. What gives this man every right to shoot somebody? kill somebody because he got a gun and, and there's been witnesses to set up there and actually testify and I would have thought people would have caught on to that where some of the witnesses set up there and said well in the in the neighborhood watch all you need is a cell phone and people that go with you when you're doing your route your routine the neighborhood watch you don't need nothing else Zimmerman was out there by himself with the weapon He was out there looking for trouble and people set up here and trying to play this whole he's God. That's all he is. These people set up here acting like he's God. Now I'm going to put this video of Dick Gregory doing this rally speech that he did back in March of 2012. And, and like I said, 
like I said, it makes no sense on how all these peoples are taking up for Zimmerman and only four people taking up for Trayvon. I ain't never in my life. Like I said, if I was the prosecutor, I would have been grilling every last one of them. Every last one of them witnesses. I'll tell you this, man. I, I, I wish this video would hit the media. I wish the many would watch this video real closely and pick up what I'm saying and wonder why these questions ain't came into the prosecutor's mind and came across nothing. And they got all this going on. Then, you sitting there, then I'm sitting up here thinking the prosecutor's dragging his feet. He, the prosecutor's, prosecutor ain't really doing nothing. The prosecutor's letting this gonna let Zimmer well why like for real why would you let any like for real are you is, is, is Florida that messed up I'm gonna say it again like I said before if Zimmerman walks it will be another California you probably saying why are you saying it could be another California because you think about it what happened in California in the 90s when no police got off beating up Ronnie King that whole state went crazy Cities burnt, buildings built, businesses burnt down, neighborhoods messed up because they let four police officers, four or five police officers, walk for beating up on a black man. If that, if like I said, if Zimmerman walks, Florida will be another California because they did not do the right thing. It doesn't matter if they give him 20 years. If I was the judge. I would have gave him life. I wouldn't even let a jury. I would, if I was the judge to do this, I wouldn't. Even, I would say no jury, no jury. Cause what's the use of having a jury? Cause all that is right there. Didn't didn't, didn't didn't when they was picking the jury, it's like, well, we're gonna pick people that hasn't heard of this the case. It's like saying, I'm going to pick a black person that's not a really black. Everybody's heard about the case, the trial, the story, everything. You cannot sit there and pick, pick jury, pick juries that hasn't heard about what happened to Trayvon. And like I said, it makes me question this man Frank Taffy and Joe Oliver so more than ever and you probably asking why you want to question these two guys he quit his job to support them for murdering a child he sits up in the, both of them sits up in the media act like they didn't do nothing wrong oh I'm glad he killed Trayvon Zimmerman said he seen Trayvon in uh, Frank Taffy's yard if Frank Taffy said oh I didn't see him and Zimmer did. They eat one of them's lying. If, if Taffy didn't see him, then he must not. Then Trayvon must not be in his yard. If Trayvon was in his yard, how come Taffy didn't call the police saying, I got a strange person in my yard? Ain't nobody ever questioned that. And still, why would you quit your job just to support somebody to kill somebody's child? If he, if Zimmerman walks, if Zimmerman walks, it's telling the world, I could come up and kill your child and claim self-defense. Oh, self-defense. Zimmerman won't. I killed, uh, for real, for real. If Zimmerman walks and somebody kills Joe Oliver's child, they can sit there and claim self-defense. Yeah, I ain't going to be able to go to trial because y'all let like Zimmerman walk. That'd be the biggest excuse for murderers to use in this country. If Zimmerman walks from this case, if he walks, every person that kills somebody will have an excuse. Self-defense, Zimmerman walked. There will be no murderers in jail, no murderers in prison, because this man ended up walking from a murder case. 
true. If this man walks, people are going to be using Zimmerman as an excuse. It's like the person, my name is Mud. They're going to be using, oh, Zimmerman, Zimmerman, you can't arrest me. Self-defense. That's how it's going to be, self-defense. And I want y'all to think about this. I want y'all to think about this. Why did everybody that was a witness except for Trayvon's friends and family say before the trial, we didn't see nothing, but when the trial started, they seen everything. That's one question that should have been running through your mind. Why did they sit there and say before the trial, we didn't see nothing, but when the trial started, we seen everything. How do you go from we didn't see nothing to we saw it all? That's one question I want to know. And how come he only needed two band-aids? If his head was getting banged against the sidewalk, hard against the sidewalk, he would have needed stitches. He would have had a contusion, several contusions or one, on the back of his head. Not on the side of his head, but on the back of his head. He found a contusion on the side of his head. How, the head, how did the contusion get on the side of your head? But not on the back of your head. If your head was being banged so hard that it busted your head open and that you needed stitches, you wouldn't be able to pick up a gun to shoot nobody. But he did. He ended up picking up a gun and shooting it. Look what look at that bullet wound. If he got his head banged against the sidewalk so hard that he wouldn't be able to pick up a gun that Trayvon would have been alive today. And that's how it is. And I'm sitting up here questioning these, these people sitting up on there. Trayvon deserved to die. What if I come in your house and kill your kids? How would you feel about that, man? He'd be like, man, that'd be messed up for you to do. Well, you sitting up here talking about Trayvon deserved to die. That's somebody's child. That's somebody's child. Y'all sitting up here, he deserved to die. He deserved to die. Because he's somebody's child. Y'all ain't like he's, y'all ain't like Zim and Superman over here. Y'all like this man Superman. And you got two people covering up more than ever. They hiding something. I would have had investigators investigate what they hiding. For real, I would have. I would have had it. I'm going to say this, I won't, if you watch this video, if you watch this video, I want y'all to tweet this video, Facebook this video, I want you to, uh, MySpace this video, I want to put it out there, I don't want it to people to understand, I don't care if y'all had to email this video to everybody that you know, to everybody that you know. And to, see, and to show the world that the prosecutor's dragging his feet. The witnesses are lying except for the Martin family and Trevor Martin's family and his friend. Because there's no way in hell that somebody's going to sit up and say, we didn't see nothing, but we heard something before the trial. But after the trial, they seen everything. How does that happen? These witnesses are lying. He was there to kill somebody. He was there to kill somebody. And I'm going to say this, man. This, this, if, Like I said, if I was the prosecutor, I wouldn't have been grilling every witness that, ever, that defendant ever put up. I would have been questioning everything that the defense put out there. Everything that the defense put out there, I would have questioned just to wonder, see where it gets me. I want to be dragging my feet. Not mad for Joe Ten like it is. If you like what like I'ma say this. If you like what I got to say, tweet this post tweet this video. Post this video on your Facebook. Post this on your Tumblr. Put this on your MySpace. Email this video to all your friends. And if you like I said, if you like it, I wanna hear what you gotta say in a video response. I would love to get a video response. Just hear what you got to say about this or in a comment. 
if this video goes viral and if this video goes viral I'll be I, it will show the world that hey there is something wrong with this trial there is there is something wrong with this trial it doesn't seem right and I'm at Frojo 10 like a T.I. is on again follow me on Facebook at no follow me on Twitter at Afro Joe the Wookie follow me on Tumblr subscribe to my channel CeeLo Jr. 2 CeeLo Jr. 3 and I can say I'm gonna post that rally video of Dick Gregory from Mount March of last year where he was talking about the trial peace love and Afro